Shalom, brothers and sisters. We're going to start with an opening scripture. Galatians 5, 13 and 14. For ye have been called into liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If you'd like to pause the video now for an opportunity to say a prayer and sing a hymn where you are, please do so now. We are now going to begin the reading of the Shema. I'm going to read it once in Hebrew and then again in English. And I'm going to pause so that we as one can say the Shema together, repeating it back to the reader. Shema Yisrael, Yiva Eloheinu, Yiva Echad. Hear, O Israel, Yiva is our Elohim. Yiva is unity. Today's message is going to be on the law of love. This is something that I talk about quite a bit. Um, I haven't done anything yet specifically about it directly. So I felt that today would be a good opportunity to do that. A lot of people like to say that there is no such thing as the law of love. You can't find the law of love in the scriptures. And that it's something that we in the fellowship have made up to convert people away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. I would respond to that by saying that we love you where you are. If that is what you believe, then we support you in your beliefs. The reason we teach the law of love is because the law of love can be found in pretty much every collection of scripture. In the Old Testament, it can be found specifically in the Torah, when God says not to love your neighbor, and not just your neighbor, but also the stranger that is in your midst in Leviticus. And in the New Testament, in Matthew, when Jesus is questioned, he states that the greatest commandment is to love God and to love your neighbor. And here we read Paul saying that the law, whether it be the law of Christ or the law of Moses, he's speaking here of the law of Moses, is fulfilled in one word, and that is even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So what is the difference between the law of Moses and the law of Christ? Well, there really isn't one because Moses received the law from God. It's not Moses' law, it's God's law. And it is the law of love. Now, the main difference there, though, is that with the law of Moses, he was establishing a nation. And so they had to have political laws and, and cultural laws and things like that that we don't need today. As Christians, we, we have our own different countries with our own laws. And so in fulfilling the law when he did, you'll notice that Jesus did it at a time when Israel was no longer a nation. It was a territory of Rome. They had to follow Roman law. And so this law of the country had become a law of the people in a more religious sense. Now that said, there are obviously religious portions of the law of Moses because that's the way that it was back in the day. Every country had their own gods and they had their own laws. But when Christ came, he said, no, we need to get down to the actual law of love, the law of Christ. Don't worry about this nationalism. Don't worry about the country stuff. Worry about being a good person. And that all came down to accepting Jesus Christ as your personal savior as Christians, loving God and loving your neighbor. There isn't really a whole lot to say about this law beyond the idea that if you follow this law, you cannot help but fulfill all other commandments. In Romans 13, 8 and I'm sorry, 13, 8 through 10, we read, Owe no one anything except love one another, for the love I'm sorry, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments 
you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And any other commandment are all summed up in this word, ye shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. That's the standard English version. I did not read that in the King James like I could typically do. Because I wanted to read it in very simple language. You pick any commandment, any one at all, and you can tell whether it is translated correctly, whether it is a political statement for, for a nation that no, well, I guess it exists now, a nation that, that didn't exist at the time of Christ, it's been reestablished Israel as, as, a, as its own country. Or if it is a genuine law of God, by seeing how does this, this instruction help us love God and love our neighbor. Now, one of the things that some people say that I personally am doing wrong is that I celebrate the commanded festivals from the Old Testament. Many people, many Christians, I should say, like to say that we don't have to do those anymore. That's been fulfilled in Christ. Now, the sacrificial animal part, I agree 100% with. But it says we're supposed to have the festivals, the feasts, forever. Not until Christ comes. Not until something happens, but forever. Why would we have them? Why would we have a festival? Why on Passover would we eat food together and lock ourselves in all night long? Yes, to remember the Passover. To remember God helping the people of Israel flee Egypt. But there's another part to it. We are together with our families. We are... When we do these festivals, the way I like to see them is a family reunion. One of the things I really like about Community of Christ is they have a time, usually in the summer, when they all get together for a week and they all just hang out. It's kind of like their Shakot, only it's not during that time period. They all go to a campground, and, and I've experienced, I've been, been there, and they, they all hang out and do stuff and eat and, and learn. It's, it's, it, it was a wonderful experience for me being there. But the thing that I love the most about it is the fact that they call it a family reunion. At least that's what they call it or here in Ohio, where I am. Because as Christians, we're all one family. And that's the way I see these holy days. It is They are fulfilling the law of love because we don't do them by ourselves. We do them as a family. Why is it that the fellowship doesn't offer some sort of video service for these holy days if we celebrate them? Because it's something you need to do with the people you're close to. to. If you want to do them with us, let us know and we can do a, a live. Um, we don't use Zoom anymore, so Google Meets or something to get together. We, we've done that before. We had a Chicote dinner once with some friends in Missouri through Zoom. We we're all able to be together because of COVID. We couldn't travel. So there is a way. You don't have to be alone. And when you look at things like Passover, you have to make sure that there's enough food for everyone. If your neighbor doesn't have enough, you invite them into your home that they're going to so that they're not alone and so that they have what they need. It's all about taking care of one another. I think that these holy days are a great testament and reminder of how to fulfill the law of love. And what happens when you do this? You feel the Spirit of God inside of you. And it helps you. It inspires you as you move forward, growing in grace, between one feast or festival and holy week, holy day into the next. As a kid, I really didn't understand the whole concept of going to church. It was incredibly boring. The songs were incredibly slow. And I got zero joy out of it. And you're talking to someone who learned how to read by studying the Bible and the Book of Mormon. So it's not that I found religion boring. I've always found religion fascinating. It's that it was just so dry and boring. So why does God command us to worship with one another? That is something I struggled with for a long time. 
until it finally hit me. It's more than just the saying where Christ said, where two or three gather, there am I. It's because we don't get to heaven alone. No one's going to be alone in heaven. It's all about service. It's all about loving one another, and we can't do that unless we, as the individual church, work together as a collective church. That is the law of love. I will tell you, the thing that I miss the most after leaving the Salt Lake City Church is service opportunities. I, I look for them and I find them, but it was a lot easier there because there was always someone that needed service. Now, generally speaking, it was someone within that particular sect. We did do a lot of service for people outside of it, and now I do have more opportunities to serve people that aren't. But how readily available they were. One of the reasons why I would love to see a fellowship branch here in Ohio is because it would give a great opportunity for us to serve one another. People could go out and seek opportunities to serve and then let the rest of the congregation know, hey, we have a service project. Come and help out. Because, as they say, putting your shoulder to the wheel and pushing along in service to others is just one of the most beautiful opportunities that we can have. So what can I say about the law of love beyond what I have already said? Not much. I know it's boring. I've had people mock me constantly. Oh, this is a hippie movement. Nobody cares about loving each other anymore. That's a ridiculous concept. And yet what other, what greater concept can there be? So my message for you today is Please don't worry about what you're doing as much as you worry about why you're doing it. Don't worry so much about what someone else is doing as much as you can worry about how much more you can love them. That is the greatest commandment. That is the law. If you want to love God, you will love your neighbor. And as you love and serve your neighbor, as King Benjamin says in the Book of Mormon, you're only serving God. That's my message. And I'll leave it with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. We're now going to partake of the sacrament. Christine is going to read both sacrament prayers. And after which, we will pause so that you can take the sacrament. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to his mission to grow closer to Jesus Christ as individuals and as a community, worshiping Jesus Christ through God's word, the sacrament, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he hath given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do so in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, 
that they may have his spirit to be with them. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this week's worship service. Wherever you are and whenever you're watching it, it doesn't matter if you're worshiping on the Lord's Day, Sunday, or the Sabbath, Saturday, or any other day of the week because that's just when you have available. What matters is that you are taking the time to worship the Lord and that we're able to do it together. It's my prayer that eventually we can grow to a point to where we can do this live to where we have enough people that we can offer this service, uh, enough people in the ministry, I mean, that we can offer the service on Saturdays and Sundays, that we have enough people that we can offer this service in all the different time zones. But for right now, this is the best way that we found to accommodate everyone. If you do feel called by the Spirit, impressed by the Spirit to help with these, we would love to have people read the scriptures, say prayers, even share messages. If you're ordained, whether you be male or female, and Christine's an ordained woman, so obviously we ordained women in this movement, women in this movement, and she's been reading the sacrament prayers. I'd love for someone else to volunteer to read them, so that we can all share in the blessing of serving one another, because that is the law of love that we were just speaking about. So that said, let's say our closing prayer. And thank you again for joining us. <clears throat> Elohim should I. We come before thee this week to thank you for all the opportunities you've given to us. Thank you that unemployment is down. Thank you that we have vaccines for the pandemics that are currently hitting us. Thank you for the science and technology that you provided us so that we can face the challenges of this world. Thank you for YouTube, so we have a place to host these videos. Thank you for Facebook, so we have a way of sharing and meeting as, as saints. We know that there are many people out there that are seeking you, that are suffering, whether it be from spiritual PTSD, from sin, from Satan, from a lack of self-love or a lack of love and community, for a lack of a place they can call home. We ask that you please bless these people. Send them to us. Help them find us so they know that they are not alone. Help us become closer knit as a community and as a fellowship. Bless us that rather than sitting alone in islands, we will find the strength and the courage to meet with one another, whether it be online or in our homes. Please help the saints to grow real, true, and genuine friendships one with another. Help us to live the law of love, not merely in words, but in deeds, and not only by giving of ourselves, but of accepting others. I know it's hard. I know the struggles are real. I know the pain that people are going through Satan uses it to make them feel isolated, alone, and keeps them trapped. 
it is my prayer that we can begin to talk one with another more, fellowship with one another more. God, if it is your desire for us merely to make these videos every week, we will do so for the rest of our lives. If it is your will that we can be one as saints in a more direct manner, then please help us to find that path to make this possibility a reality. One of the greatest lessons we learn from the scripture is that we're not alone and that we need one another. So please help us to do our duty as saints to grow stronger and to be there for one another. To get past our insecurities and our vulnerabilities. We thank thee for all thy blessings. We pray these things to thee humbly. In the name of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ. So mote it be. Amen.